welcome back to another Bums Woods video. I'm your host, The Bum, and we have a lot to talk about today, so let's get right to it. So this week's video is mostly about warning signs. Now, over the last couple of weeks, there have been a few moves that have made me raise my eyebrow, you know, put up a couple red flags, you know, really made me think about what is going on with the move, other than the fact that they're just signing, you know, player X. Now, there could be lots of reasons, and maybe you're even thinking too far into some of these, like I probably will, and like I am guilty of every single year. But that's the job of a good fantasy football player, is to basically break down the move and figure out the best possible scenario so you could make the best pick on draft day. First move I want to talk about is Vernon Davis to the Redskins. Now, he's not going to be a guy that's going to get a lot of playing time. I feel like he's just a safety net for the Redskins in case Jordan Reed gets injured. Reed is a great tight end, and really he's one of the top tight ends in the league. If he were to be able to stay healthy all year long, which has been something that he hasn't done yet, then I really feel like he should be a top three, top five tight end. One of those guys that you even reach for in the first five, six rounds, rather than those guys that can be interchangeable towards the end of the draft, you know, rounds eight through 11. You know, those guys you can wait on. He's not a guy he, that you can wait on when healthy. He has the skills to put up huge numbers. And he showed that last year in 14 games, putting up 950 yards and 11 touchdowns. Now, I think the signing of Vernon Davis really shows that the Redskins are worried that he could go down and they'll need someone athletic enough to fill in his spot. And I don't think that they had anybody to do that. Vernon Davis has lost a step. He didn't do anything for the Broncos last year. But who knows? He is Vernon Davis. And who knows what could be brought out of him. So if Jordan Reed goes down, Vernon Davis has a possibility of stepping in and playing okay. Who knows if he makes a team, it might be diving too deep into it, but it's something to look out for. It's a little bit worrisome for me when drafting him that high. I wouldn't really feel comfortable drafting him as high as he'll, he'll probably deserve to be drafted. Now i got to talk about Chris Ivory, and I really don't want to. Alright, so the next player is Chris Ivory. He makes a move over to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have really had a rough time running the football. They have TJ Yeldon, so that's really the player that I think is most affected by this. Now, he is saying that they brought Ivory in to keep him healthy, which is probably true. But, they were the worst at getting into the end zone from the running back position. Really, I think they brought Ivory in to be the guy that gets the short yardage, the guy that they could pound into the into the end zone and get the touchdown, rather than having to throw the ball like they always seem to have to do. Now, does that hurt Yeldon? I think it does hurt Yeldon, even if he never had those touchdowns in the beginning. <laughs> but the fact that he's now going to be vultured, it really takes a lot of his value away, especially when I'm thinking about drafting him. He is a young running back. He's he's a decent running back. But in the scheme that they run, I don't feel like he's really featured the right way. And with the addition of Ivory and him taking all the short yarded stuff or the, the red zone stuff, I feel like his value, Yeldon's value, is a lot lower than it would have been if Ivory never signed with the Jaguars. So over the last 48 hours, there have been a couple of moves that really piqued my interest. They're really intriguing. Sharkandrick West signed for two years to the Kansas City Chiefs, as well as Spencer Ware signing a three-year contract to the Kansas City Chiefs. This is really interesting because they still have Jamal Charles, who's coming off of a knee injury, and they have Niles Davis. Now... I'm really interested to see where Niles Davis goes because they're talking about trading him. I think that he can be a really good running back in another system, one that gives him a chance to run and be the guy. He can't really be the guy in this in this offense because he has so many other running backs that they want to uh, plug in place and to make plays. He really needs to be the guy to run right down the middle, get you the yards, get going, and I feel like he could do that on another team, especially if they trade him off to someone with a nice offensive line. He might be a guy that I look to draft. Now, what does it mean for Jamal Charles? It means that I think they're kind of scared to keep Jamal around and not have any insurance policy. They have two really good young running backs, and they're not going to get rid of them because they know that Jamal Charles' time is almost over. Now, I don't 
really believe that he's done. I think that he could still have a great year this year. I mean, last time he hurt his knee, he came back with 1,500 yards. The next year after that, he had double-digit touchdowns. So he really can come off of this. He has he has the feeling like he's done it before and he could do it again. That Nothing will hold him back. His knee will be strong. And that's a lot of the mental stuff that a running back has to get over when coming off of a knee injury. Now, I feel like this could be the case with him again. So I wouldn't be scared to draft him as high as the second round, third round, where I think he may go in these drafts unless we see something amazing in the preseason where he jumps back up to number one. Or we hear that Sarkandrick West and Spencer Ware are really just there to back him up and they're not going to have a bigger role, which I don't think is the case. All right, guys, that's all I have for you this week. Hopefully you got something out of it. You can see last week's video, if you missed it, over here somewhere in the annotation. Uh, you could also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. That's somewhere over here. I'm just trying to point to the right place. And you can always reach me at Twitter, Bums Blitz. My website is BumsBlitz.com. I am The Bum, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Talk to you later.